I could not stand the wheels being so sunk on this thing for much longer. I had to put some space shoes on before we even got started today. Something, this may be a me thing, I'm not 100% sure. But one thing I noticed is if I make a car look closer to being complete, you know, these aren't even the wheels I'm going to keep on it, but just some decent wheels on it, lowered, kind of put together-ish, I don't know, it helps me a lot with motivation because it's not so far off visually. It, it, it's just a little aid. It's something I do to uh, help keep me motivated. But Anyway, today, the project, the task at hand, is slamming through some work on the old K-Swap Sephiro build. So this thing is pretty far along at this point. Clutch is in, trans is on, engine's in, bolted down, drive shaft, shifter, suspension, brakes, brake lines. I mean, there is not a whole ton left to do to this thing. The list is getting smaller every day, and we're gonna try to knock that down a few more notches today. So the first things we've got, we ordered some more parts from Tilgay Factory. I was waiting for you guys to open this. Let me grab my razor. I haven't even cheated. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, more tape. Oh, there's more tape. All right, hold on, guys. Ooh, Ooh that's a nice looking unit. We have our intake manifold. So, oh, it technically goes this way. So on the stock K-Series intake, it's meant for a front-wheel drive car. The spot for the throttle body is in the complete wrong spot. So we have this Skunk 2 one, which again we got from Toge Factory. We also had them get it powder-coated for us. But you can see inside the runners, the casting. It's a really nice manifold. I'm really excited about this. I wasn't sure which one to get for a while. Decided to get this one. We're going to try to retain our stock throttle body. Uh, but more on that later. More on that later. We've got this idler relocation kit to work with this. We've got the belt to have a turbo smart. I have opened this wastegate. Got it in red. So we've got that. That was kind of the last piece of the turbo puzzle. We've got the turbo. We got the manifold. Needed the gate. We got some wiring stuff. We got fuel system stuff. We've got a lot of stuff. This is just the start of what we're going to be working on. So enough jibber jabber. Let's dive in. Well, would you look who's here? It's old Benny boy in the coop. The freaking whip. That front whip has seen better days. If anyone has a good pig nose bumper or lip, hit me up. Please. <laughs> he drove this thing two hours to the track, drifted it, and drove it here. It's oh, impressive. It's impressive. All right, so Ben brought me a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my cat, Tuck, who he loves. We both love. We love Tuck. And uh, it's it's a real picture of him that he found from a while back when, you know, he was first start, getting started in money and stuff. So he's rich now. Millionaire. He invests. Tuck. It's Tuck. King Tuck. You guys don't know Tuck that well, but Tuck's pretty cool. So we got a little distracted by the pit bike. So this is my pit bike. This thing has been neglected for a while. I cleaned the car on it the other day and got it running perfect. Running better than ever. But the uh, exhaust was a little broken on it, so it's basically straight pipe. I felt bad ripping it around the neighborhood doing wheelies because uh, it was real obnoxious. So I got an exhaust for it, freaking high performance Amazon special. Sounds great now. And put a kill switch on it. This thing has never had a kill switch, so you'd have to choke it and like get it to die. And before the carb was cleaned, it was like a procedure to get this thing running. Now. I mean, basically a CRF 450 now. So uh, yeah, anyway, we got, we got distracted by that. We're gonna actually get to work on the old Sephiro now. I think first step's gonna be to pull the hood off because the hood shocks on this, it just doesn't open very high. And then we can start working on some intake manifold stuff. We got some stuff to do before we can put the intake manifold on. 
Alright, so the intake manifold's a tight fit on here. So I'm going to pull these studs out and use bolts. Um, just because with the studs, you can't really get it lined up out here, it hits, but it seems like it'll go on once it's about flush with the head. Find out. That's going to get cut for sure. Like how much can you really cut? I mean, it's almost there. All right, so to make the intake manifold fit, we've at least got to clearance this bracket here. Now, the idler delete relocation that I got puts an idler here to avoid the tensioner here. But I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to tension the belt. I'm not sure if I need to switch to the older style K-series that has like a different alternator mounting point. So, so I got to do some more research to figure out exactly what I need there. Uh, but we can do the clutch line. I got a clutch damper and everything. I want to go ahead and get that done while Ben's here and we can bleed the clutch and the brakes. That'll be pretty satisfying. So to do that though, we need this thing on the lift. So we got to do the swap -a -roo. All right, so originally the slave cylinder was on this side of the trans. Now it is on this side with the BMW trans. So we're gonna be eliminating this factory clutch damper and all this stuff and these hard lines. We're gonna be running a braided line over this way. We got a little special trickery box I'll show you and then it'll go into the uh, slave cylinder here. <laughs> She's out. We're good. Nailed it on the fitting. All right. I'm gonna run this down here to our clutch delay valve. <laughs> This is something I've always wanted to try. Basically, it, it's supposed to take the shock out of a clutch kick. Like it, it, it kind of slows down the clutch movement a little bit. And on this car, I'm gonna have to clutch kick a lot. And you know, a lot of people say with a ZF without the Guibo, you really need it. I don't know, but either way, I wanted to try it. I want this car to not break ideally. So why not put it in and I uh, get to try it out. So we've got our line coming from the clutch master there. That'll go into this thing here. We'll mount it about there, and then luckily, this fitting was the exact same thread as the uh, Nissan one, so that got real easy. I got it right. So we'll get this mounted up and then tie it all together. Gonna have to mount it a little crooked for the best line routing. <laughs> bolted up all right sweet it's pretty satisfying you guys a quick look at it so 90s back tucks up against the firewall we'll have to uh, p clamp it there comes over to here like i said i mounted this a little crooked just to make the line rounding a little easier so it wasn't like burp burp um and get us off this hump a little bit so we've got this mounted nice matching stainless bolts and then our short little line to our clutch slave very satisfying. I'm glad that all worked out. I just kind of guesstimated on the line links and the fittings and it worked out. 
Sweet. All right, let's, uh, we get to bleed the clutch now and bleed the brakes. So hopefully after this, we'll have working clutch and working brakes, which would be pretty dang exciting. Ready to pump up the jam. All right, got the brakes all bled. Brakes feel good. Got the clutch bled. It fought us a little bit, but it's all good now. That, that's exciting. So we have a clutch, we have brakes, we have a shifter, we have a drive shaft. We're getting there, we're getting there. So one thing I wanna do real quick is lower the rear a little bit, pull some camber out of it, raise the front a little bit so it sits more level, just cause that whole, you know, it's nice to see it looking kind of like it's gonna look while it's in progress. It gets me more motivated. Right now it's all nose down and cambered in and it's a mess. So I'm gonna do that real quick, put the wheels back on, see what it looks like. Then we'll move on to something else. Some other projects, we got many, many of them. <laughs> All right, even though I'm not keeping these wheels, I finally got this thing sitting about right. I tried to pull the camber out of it when I first threw the suspension on, still had a ton of camber. I gotta put my alignment setup on it and actually align it, but it feels so good to see it sitting meaty. Now, we're probably gonna be running a completely different wheel and tire setup. These are 235s. I'll probably run 265s on this, but again, it just goes back to that, like making it look decent while you're working on it. Get, it gets me more hyped at least. Like it looks, it looks so good with the wheels all fitted, all aggressive. Even if it's not gonna stay like that, even if it's gonna change, feels a lot better than them being sunk in two inches. So I'm glad we got that done. Ride height's about where it's gonna be. Uh, the front might go a tad lower on that side. We're also running 265s in the front right now and we'll be running for sure like a 235 in the front. So it's gonna change, but it looks good for now. And that's what matters. So now we're gonna move on. I locked it to the handbrake. But this being a street car, we're not gonna be running some big old handle up here. We gotta cut apart all of this stuff and then it's in the way of the AC buttons and street car, street car. It's a tough balance, it really is. I'm so used to building race cars. Cars just that it mostly dedicated to the track. You know, you can drive them on the street, but the, there's not much thought put into them being comfortable on the street. This car is the opposite, needs to perform on the track, but really needs to be comfortable on the street. Instead of doing a big old handle, we're still doing a hydraulic handbrake, which is why we have the dual calipers. So we have a caliper for our normal brake system, which is what we bled. We have a second caliper for our handbrake system. But again, instead of the big old handle, we have a little trick. And that is this GK Tech hidden handbrake system. So this is gonna go in our center console. You're not gonna be able to see it. And then the cable from the factory handbrake is going to pull on this little lever here, which is then going to push on the master cylinder and work like a normal hydraulic handbrake, but using the stock handle. Now, one of the cooler things about this, besides it being more hidden, less in the way and all that, is we'll still be able to use our factory ratchet mechanism. So you wouldn't want to leave the car parked overnight like that with pressure on the brake system. But, you know, if we back the car out on a slant, we need to warm it up. We can use our little drift button, lock it, let it sit there, boom. And then we've got like a stock looking handbrake setup, but with hydro. I, I, when they came out with this, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I'm so excited to be putting it in a car. So that's what we're doing. It's a little more involved than a normal handbrake install. So we need to get to work. Uh, come on. Oh, wow. Now that was easy. <laughs> Three screws. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so dirty. Oh, we got a plug, one plug, three screws, one plug. Wow. Oh, are there nuts on the bottom? Why would they do that? 
Why would they put nuts on the bottom? Why would you do that to me, Nissan? Well, we're gonna put this thing back on the lift to get this cable out, but we need to remove the rest of this, so I guess I might as well keep going. Oh, look at this. It's a Japanese one yen, which is basically one cent. The Japanese, wow, they're so white. Japanese, they use a lot of change. Change is really common. There's a lot of vending machines. When I was over there, I kept a lot of change, which most people don't really keep here. And one yen is basically like a cent. Now the direct correlation changes, obviously the exchange rate, but usually it's like a hundred yen is a dollar, a thousand. Take off the last two zeros, you get dollars. Just a little tidbit for you. It might've changed. It was a couple years ago when I went, but usually it was around there. Right, we're gonna need to cut this carpet. This hurts, cutting up. Nice carpet like this. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the drive shaft back out because one we gotta get to these nuts here or the e-brake cables, and then two, we're gonna have to drill holes to do a sandwich plate for our mount. So, as much as I don't wanna pull it back out, I never really fully tightened it because I knew I might have to. Kind of trying to get this plate off now. Oh, she's like glued on there. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, step one done. Oh, the old Nipex aren't having it. that it's interesting this being a bigger luxury car compared to an s13 it's got way more sound deadening gotta go with the method i didn't want to use We might have to cut this front out, but we'll find out. I want to check first. All right, back to the cutting table. truth bring bring beam me down Scotty All right, we've got our cable swedged to our little clevis here, which attaches to the little bracket there. So that way when we pull this up, 
it'll pull that, which will pull, which will push the master. So I think we're all sorted. Got it all tight, got it oriented correctly. It's time to toss it back in for the hopefully final time. <laughs> Sweet. Let's make sure the uh, console still fits and then we gotta start doing our lines. Like a glove. Haha, <laughs> that's so cool. You wouldn't even know anything was in there. Haha, <laughs> so satisfying. I'm gonna have to figure out a good way to, oh, that'll work. I'm gonna have to make some little brackets to mount to these screw holes to hold the center console in tight and secure. Cause we had to cut out all the bolts for it, but hey, it's in there. It works. Well, <laughs> it moves. So yeah, I'll pull it back out. All right, now it's time for the lines. So for that, we have GK Tech line kit. We got a GK Tech handbrake, GK Tech dual caliper brackets. Might as well have a GK Tech line kit. I didn't even realize they include little clamps for you. You see the clamps? Do you see the clamps? And a T. You got a T. All right, so these are going to be our two that split off from the T. This is going to be our main line from the T. So this is what we need to install first and then route along the trans tunnel. So we're going to use our beautiful already there hole from our handbrake cables. I do want to seal this up though. Even if anything, just with some, some speed tape. It's nasty looking and you won't see any of it, which is the point. Alrighty, I got all of the handbrake lines mounted. Comes down here, boom, boom, oh, over there <laughs> to a T. Went ahead and threw a rib nut in here, bolted the T here, and then the lines split off to each side. They're tucked behind the factory brake line to keep them up away from the axle, and then they come in to the caliper. So, overall, really happy with the routing there. All that's left, bleed the brakes, and then the handbrake system is done. I cut a little plate. So I gotta wait for the paint to dry on to cover up as much of this hole as possible. I'm gonna screw it in and silicone it just so it's removable in case I ever need to access this. But just to keep fumes out again, street car, street car. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't want fumes in, you wanna keep the cabin sealed, noise, you know, trying to keep it quiet in there, as quiet as possible, yada yada. So anyway, I gotta wait for the paint to dry on that. We can toss that on, we can toss the drive shaft back in, bleed the bricks and we're done. But for now, since I gotta wait for that to dry and that paint takes forever, uh, that's gonna be it for this video. So I hope to see you guys for the next one We got a lot more work to do on this thing. We kind of figured out the uh, intake manifold thing I got the parts for that and yada yada intake fuel system turbo stuff. There's a lot to do So hope to see you guys for that. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye